Welcome to this introductory series of training videos for SOLIDCAM. This video's topic is creating milling tool components. So we covered in the previous video the different file formats within the toolkit. In this video we'll be talking specifically about creating milling tool components and milling tool assemblies. So let's start by going and creating that new tool library. So let's go tools, solid cam, toolkit, new tool library, and we're going to choose the tool components to start. So in terms of tool components, what you're actually doing here is you're defining which type of cutter, shank, and holder you want to define. So in the, in the, in the, uh, in the use of this tool, I'm actually going to need, let's say, a flat end mill. So I'll drag that over to my cutters. I would like a ball end mill as well. So I'll bring that over here as well. And then let's actually throw in a thread mill as well. So all those are cutter types. You'll see that if I try to drag that over to the shank or the adapters, it won't go. So in, to, in terms of tool components, you can only drag them to what they actually are. So later we'll be doing a type of holder. So I'll drag a holder over there. Can't go to shank. I have to go to adapters and holders. In terms of the individual tool components, whether they are uh, cutters or if they're holders, they all have different ways of being defined. In terms of the cutters, you can see that I have these three tools. I'm going to use these to represent the three different shape types. So for, for the first one, for the end mill, we'll use the parameter data, which allows me to basically just plug in some information here. So if I wanted this to be a half inch flat end mill, I could just change the cutting diameter to half inch, and it generates it as a half inch. Now, the half inch is the cutting diameter. We also have some shoulder diameters, some arbor diameters. So if I wanted to, I could increase this, decrease this, whatever I need to. If you look at the tool viewer, the yellow portion, represents the cutting length. If I change that to, let's say, a half inch, you'll see that that reduces. The overall length is still three inches. You have a number of flutes. You have the helical angle of the flutes. So you have all this information here to define the, uh, the generic shape of your tool. Let me just put that back to one inch. You can also define fees and speeds for your tool. The fees and speeds that you define here are essentially placeholders. When you add fees and speeds to the tool definition, but then go to use it in an operation, you will actually define the fees and speeds used in the operation in the operation manager, which you'll see in the follow-up videos when you add milling tool paths. But here, this is for the, just the definition of the tool. When you first import the tool, th these are the fees and speeds that will uh, auto-populate the fees and speed of the operation manager. If we go to the ball end mill, when you define any type of tool, it has a basic shape based off of what tool you've chosen there. So if we go into this section here, I actually defaulted it to a ball end mill, but I can always change it on the fly to something else. So if this should have actually been a taper mill, I can switch it to a taper mill. If this should have been a barrel shape, it can come in as a barrel shape. But I'm going to put this back as the ball end mill. So that actually is your ability to, on the fly, change the shape of the tool with the default settings. But let's say this, this ball end mill is not exactly the, the true shape of my, my actual tool. I have a, um, a larger arbor and maybe kind of a conical neck on there as well. So what you can do is in the shape type, instead of using parameter data, you can switch this to sketch or 2D. And what that'll allow you to do is actually plug in some values for the individual components of that of that uh, that shape. So we have a torus on the bottom, or basically any kind of curve. We've got the cylinder that represents the remainder of that cutting area. We've got our shoulder cylinder, and then we have the arbor cylinder. So if I go to the arbor and say this is a, let's make it a three quarter inch arbor. All right, so that should not have been that one. Let's change that one back. I'm looking at this cylinder and make this one 375. Okay, so obviously my tool does not look like that. There should be a transition from the shoulder to the, um, to the, to the arbor. So what I can do is I can right click on this cylinder and I can add a shape up, uh, above it or below it. So in terms of the last cylinder that you see highlighted there, I'll add a shape below it that looks like that cone. Now I can control that cone as well. So the bottom diameter is 2, 250. The top diameter could be the 750. 
And now I have a tool that looks a little more realistic. Now, obviously, the transitions between there are probably too much. This is just for visual purposes, but gives you an idea that you can modify the shape of a standard tool on the fly by adding uh, your, your, uh, your shapes here. Now, if you have an even more complex of a shape, some sort of a form tool that you want to define, bottom right corner, you can click on this import icon to bring in a SolidWorks sketch. A video on how to define tools using 2D sketches can be found on the YouTube channel. Let's go to the thread mill. So the third type of tool definition you can use in the shape type is a 3D model. And all you're really doing here is you are now browsing to a solid file. Now these solid files can come from your tool supplier or these could be SOLIDWORKS models that you've imported and translated from a customer's file or you've built yourself. And now it's just a simple way of defining this milling tool by just browsing to that file. So I'll just click on that file there, click open. And now this tool has the shape of this tool that I've brought in. And again, the yellow represents the cutting surface. So this tool is actually not all cutting. It's really just that bottom surface there. So in this tool picture window, I can right click. I can do measure, and now I'll measure from the tip of that cutting surface there to the flat face of the part. I'm just going to hold my control key, click on that icon, and very similar to what you would see inside SOLIDWORKS, I'm doing basically in a, a measurement. I'm just taking a measurement from that point to that face, getting that normal distance. So this should actually have a cutting length of 0 0.10825. So once I click on that, we now have this tool as being defined as cutting only on those surfaces there. And on the gray surfaces, those are non-cutting. So that'll give me any kind of errors when I go to use this tool in a uh, toolpath and it rubs on the, uh, on, the, on the neck or the arbor. So those are the three tool, type, tool definition types. Parameter data, you plug in your information. Shape data, you can plug in the shape information, either using these building blocks or from a SOLIDWORKS sketch or you can actually just bring in a solid model. Now, one note on the solid model, it is browsing to this particular folder according to your SolidCAM settings. SolidCAM settings were covered in a previous video. So in this folder location, you can see all kinds of different shapes in here. But if you are going to import a shape from another folder, it's best to actually have that folder open somewhere else and then just copy and paste it directly into this window. Now, in terms of folder, Holders can be defined in only two ways, holders and essentially shanks as well. Uh, under holder, we have the 3D model, which allows me to browse again to a type of a holder, again from that same location, or from the 2D, and again, the same thing. You use the building blocks or you import from a 2D sketch. So let's, um, let's take a look at assemblies. So I'll just exit out of that component and we'll go and create a milling assembly. So I'll go toolkit, new tool library. Let's do tool assemblies. So in the tool assemblies window, if this was opened up inside of a cam part file, I would be able to see the different stations on my turret or the different uh, stations on my tool carousel if I had a, a multiple tool with a tool changer on a mill. Uh, so when you are looking at the assemblies, you have the same workflow here. I can define a tool on the fly. So let's say I drag this end mill over here and tool one is now this end mill with particular data here that I can control. So I can still define individual tool components in the assembly, uh, but they will only really exist in this assembly. They don't actually output as a tool component library unless I extract it later. Let's add a adapter. So I'm actually going to go to a pre-existing default library that comes with SolidCAM, SolidCAM Components Library. Double click on that. And you can see that it comes with different cutters in metric and imperial. So these are kind of specially shaped tools. Uh, under arbors, sorry, uh, under uh, adapters and holders, you can see that there's different adapters. There are different holders of different types. So let's build an assembly for um, let's say a half inch end mill. So we'll go back over here and I'll just define this as a half inch end mill. Okay, and again, I could actually just browse to a tool component library using this icon and then get those from a pre-existing tool library as well. 
But let's say we have this guy here. In the tool assemblies window, we actually have this additional window here called connection. And this shows me the mounting point data for this tool. So right now, this tool is sitting right on zero. So if this was a turret or if this was the head of a mill, by setting all these to zero, I'm basically saying that the, the end of this tool is sitting right at the mounting point of that turret or of that, um, uh, that, that mill head. So the individual mounting point of a cutter is really just where it sits in the overall assembly on the part. When you define things like an adapter, so I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna drag this CAT40 to station two. Holders and adapters all have mounting points. So where that, uh, that solid will mount on, again, on that turret or that head, that's the mounting point, but they also have joints. And since this was from a default library, I won't be able to edit it here, but if I were to create my own holder from a solid or from the, the 2D sketch that we were just talking about, I would define where the tool sits on that actual holder, or in the case of this adapter, where the holder sits on this adapter, and that is the joint. If you have a holder that holds multiple tools or multiple um, shanks in, the, in, in, in terms of whatever type of holder it is, you can always add more joints to this individual holder. Now in this case, this is just an adapter, so there really is only one component that I'm gonna lock in there. And that will be my holder for half inch. Let's just drag this guy over on top of that CAT40. With this top-down assembly approach, the CAT40 holds on to that adapter, or that and onto that holder. So you can see that it locked into joint one of that adapter. If we step it down to showing what that holder does, that holder has a mounting point of that point right there. So the whole, the mounting point of one component is locked into the joint, comp the joint position of whatever it's sitting inside of. So a good example of that is this end mill. Let's say I drag this end mill to station two. If you look at the indent, the end mill is mounted in the same position as the adapter. And I can show that by doing a focus. So the mounting point of the adapter and the mounting point of the end mill are both defined in those positions there. For the adapter, it's on that face there. For the end mill, it's the back end. But they're both lined up on that same station or head position that you see there. Obviously, that is not correct. The end mill should be sitting inside of the holder. So to correct that, I'm just going to drag the end mill on top of the holder. And that should lock it into place. It should lock into joint one of that holder which it does. Now in this case, the end mill is defined as being the back end of the tool, and the joint one of the holder is being defined as the front tip, front center of that adapter. Um, so what's really going on here is that they are just uh, coincident, and that's not actually how we want to hold this thing. This end mill should actually be mounted maybe one inch into the part. So I'll just put in positive one inch in the positive Z direction, and you can see now it's being held there. So I've moved the mounting position one inch in the Z direction. So if I take off that focus, make everything shaded again, you can see that that is the tool that we would end up using. So in tool assemblies, it's really just the connection of all these components. You put the adapter, the holder, and the end mill, and they all line up. If we take a look at... Um, the rest of the library here, you can see that there are other holders in here, and they are all default holders, but if you go to define your own holder or your own tool, you'll use different definitions that we'll cover in a future video. So any questions on this, give us a call at the main text board line at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2, and uh, stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.